In the intricate web of American political history, the phenomenon of presidential families is a perennial topic of both intrigue and, at times, controversy. Placed beside dynastic names like Roosevelt, Kennedy, and Adams, the Bush family carves its unique niche, perhaps more contentious than its predecessors. Indeed, unlike the direct lineage of power seen in other 20th century dynasties, where the Roosevelts and Kennedys being among America's richest families at the time played a pivotal role, the Bushes charted a different course. Their ascent from old money to the pinnacle of American politics wasn't a straightforward tale of inheritance or predestined power. Instead, it was a saga marked by astute political maneuvering and an uncanny knack for being at the right place at the right time. In today's episode, we detail how the story of the Bush family is not just about reaching the zenith of political influence, it encapsulates the dual American ethos of entrepreneurship and self-appointed public duty. Their journey, mired in debate and discussion, offers a fascinating insight into the dynamics of power and privilege in the United States. So join us for the ride as we describe how the Bush family went from old money to presidents. Emerging from Europe in the 1600s, the Bush family name weaves through the fabric of history, marking not only a journey of political prominence, but also a richly layered ancestral heritage. This epic tale, steeped in tradition and crossing oceans, echoes the transformative journey of a family that would come to leave an unforgettable mark on American leadership and culture. Now, the Bush family's European lineage primarily encompasses English and German descent. Samuel Bush, born in 1647, marked the beginning of the family's American saga. And extensive research by British genealogist Roger Power has even linked the Bushes to the British royal family. Notably, George H.W. Bush, the 41st President of the United States, is a 13th cousin twice removed of our late Queen Elizabeth II. And this royal connection extends to various historical figures, including King Henry VII, Charles II's mistress, Barbara Villiers, and Mary, the younger sister of Henry VIII. But the Bush family's American journey gained momentum in the mid-19th century. Specifically, among the first Bush ancestors in the USA was George Washington Bush, a mixed-race pioneer and one of the earliest permanent settlers in the Washington Territory. In 1845, he played a crucial role in the early development of what is now Washington State, and that particular George Bush's marriage to Isabella James, of German descent, further diversified the family's heritage. Together they had nine sons, six of whom reached adulthood, and settled at Fort Vancouver, Washington. Then, George Bush's entrepreneurial spirit was evident as he built the region's first grist mill and sawmill, establishing a flourishing farm known as Bush Prairie. And by the late 1800s, the Bush family had begun to amass considerable wealth. Next, Samuel Prescott Bush, a minister's son, was instrumental in establishing the family's fortune. He rose from an apprenticeship to become the president of Buckeye Steel Castings Company, the third largest steel coupler producer in the US at the turn of the century. His tenure at Buckeye Steel Castings, once controlled by Frank Rockefeller, brother of John D. Rockefeller, marked a significant step in the family's ascent to prominence. And Samuel Prescott Bush's influence extended beyond his industrial endeavors. He co-founded the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, presided over the Ohio Manufacturing Association, and served on the board of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. Appointed to Herbert Hoover's President's Committee for Unemployment Relief, he forged an even stronger relationship with the Rockefeller family, further cementing the Bush family's status in American history. Therefore, this legacy of wealth accumulation through investment banking and wartime business ventures has been a hallmark of the Bush family. Their business interests have spanned from Halliburton to Merrill Lynch, and they have famously even ventured into Major League Sports team ownership. So we've covered their initial immigration to the United States and the seeds of their legendary wealth. However, now it's time to get into the good stuff. How exactly did this admittedly shrewd set of entrepreneurs go from a simple set of money makers to a political dynasty that could rival names like Roosevelt, Adams and Kennedy in importance? To answer that, we must take a journey to the flat, temperate lands of the great state of Ohio in the late 19th century. And there we'll meet a child named Prescott. Prescott Sheldon Bush, born on the 15th of May, 1895 in Columbus, Ohio, emerged from an already formidable brood in the chronicles of American soft power. His parents, Samuel Prescott Bush and Flora Sheldon Bush, provided him with a nurturing environment that fostered an appreciation for education and sports. 
Indeed, Prescott was one of five children, showcasing his athletic prowess at St. George's School in Rhode Island and later at Yale University, where he excelled in baseball and golf, standing an impressive six feet four inches tall. Then, the outbreak of World War I in 1917 marked a pivotal moment in Prescott Bush's life. As a student at Yale, he embraced his patriotic duty by accepting an officer's commission, serving as a field artillery captain in the Connecticut National Guard. His military experience was diverse, including intelligence training in Verdun and a stint with a team of French officers. The Meuse-Argonne offensive saw him alternating between intelligence and artillery roles, experiences that profoundly shaped his sense of duty and commitment to his country. Post-war life saw Prescott Bush returning to a civilian existence, gradually immersing himself in local politics. At the time, he and his wife began raising what would become a family of five children, Prescott Jr., George H. W., more on him later, Jonathan William, or Bucky, and Nancy. And Father Prescott's military service ingrained a deep sense of honor and duty, qualities that later influenced his political ambitions. Furthermore, Prescott Bush's post-military career was marked by a series of strategic moves in the business world. Starting in 1919 with the Simmons Hardware Company in St. Louis, Missouri, he then transitioned to Columbus, Ohio, working for the Hupp Products Company. His journey led him to Massachusetts, where he became the president of sales for Stedman Products. In 1927, a significant career shift occurred when he joined W.A. Harriman and Company, a bank later merged with Brown Brothers. Here, Bush honed his investment management and advisory skills, attracting high-profile clients, including the Harrimans themselves. Controversy, however, was not far from Prescott Bush's storied career. In July 2007, Harper's Magazine published an article by attorney Scott Horton, which highlighted Prescott Bush's alleged involvement in the 1934 business plot. This plan aimed to leverage retired Marine Corps Major General Smedley Butler in a scheme to overthrow President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The plot, however, did not materialize, and Prescott Bush's business dealings extended to his role as a founder and director of the Union Banking Corporation, or the UBC, an investment bank that was a clearinghouse for assets and enterprises held by Fritz Thyssen, a German steel magnate and early Nazi supporter. In 1942, during World War II, the US government seized the bank under the Trading with the Enemy Act, amidst suspicions of holding gold for Nazi leaders. Although these allegations were disproved, Bush's connection with Thyssen and his role in UBC, as reported by some sources, remained a controversial aspect of his legacy. Then, in the 1950s, Prescott Bush, by then already a figure of considerable influence, pivoted towards the political sphere. Aligning himself with the Republican Party, his initial foray into politics faced a setback in 1950, but he secured a seat in the Senate two years later. As a senator, Bush was a vocal advocate of President Dwight D. Eisenhower's policies, and he played a notable role in the Interstate Highway Program, where he championed the principle of apportionment based on relative need, a policy adopted in 1956. And beyond infrastructure, Bush was actively engaged in social issues. He contributed to the American Birth Control League as early as 1942, and was instrumental in the first nationwide campaign of Planned Parenthood in 1947 and his commitment to education and racial equality was evident in his role as the chairman of the Connecticut branch of the United Negro College Fund in 1951. However, even as he was gaining immense power in the US Senate, Prescott Bush could perhaps not imagine what the next generation of men bearing his name would do to further the power and prestige of a lineage that had by then already been synonymous with seizing the reins of influence and notoriety. Future President, Vice President, and CIA Director George Herbert Walker Bush, in his adolescent years, attended Phillips Academy Andover, a prestigious boarding school in Massachusetts. There, he distinguished himself as a compassionate and accomplished student, often standing up for younger students in an environment where bullying was prevalent. His leadership qualities shone through as he became the senior class president and captained both the baseball and soccer teams, while also engaging in various clubs and his time at Andover culminated on his 18th birthday in 1942, the same day he enlisted in the United States Navy, marking the start of a significant chapter in his life. Then, during World War II, from 1942 to 1945, Bush served as a naval aviator. The attack on Pearl Harbor spurred his decision to join the Navy and train as an aviator. 
After pre-flight training at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, he earned his commission as an ensign and embarked on 58 combat missions. His military tenure was notable, including a harrowing incident where he had to bail out of his burning plane near the Bonin Islands. And for his valor, he received the Distinguished Flying Cross, three Air Medals, and the Presidential Unit Citation, awarded to the USS San Jacinto crew. Next, George H.W. Bush's personal life took a significant turn in 1945, when he married Barbara Pierce. They first met during the Christmas holidays in 1941 at a country club dance in Greenwich. And their engagement, which occurred before George departed for World War II, was sealed with a sapphire ring from his aunt. After surviving his plane being shot down in 1944, George returned to the US on Christmas Eve and married Barbara just two weeks later at the First Presbyterian Church in Rye, New York. Their marriage spanned 73 years and saw the birth of six children, George Walker, better known as George W, or even just W, Robin, John Ellis, or Jeb, Neil, Marvin, and Dorothy, or Doro. The Bush's union, enduring through various life challenges, became the longest of any presidential couple in history. Now, George H.W. Bush's political journey began in the 1960s and 1970s. His first notable political role was as chairman of Texas's Harris County Republican Party in 1963. He then served two terms as a U.S. representative from Texas's 7th District, starting in 1966. Despite setbacks in Senate races, his political ascent continued with appointments to significant roles, including U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. However, his tenure as the Director of Central Intelligence for the CIA in 1976 was mired in controversy. His appointment by the Ford administration during a period of intense scrutiny of the CIA raised concerns among critics like Senator Frank Church about Bush's potential to protect presidential interests. Nevertheless, Bush's time as director was marked by his efforts to boost morale and refocus the agency, earning him recognition as a capable leader. Then, George H. W. Bush's selection as Ronald Reagan's vice president was a strategic decision, balancing Reagan's ticket with a moderate figure like Bush. Reagan, perceived as lacking in foreign affairs expertise, saw value in Bush's extensive experience in the field. However, Bush's selection came at the last moment, influenced by a mix of chance and behind-the-scenes maneuvering. And as vice president, Bush played a key role in domestic areas such as federal deregulation and anti-drug programs, and also represented the US in numerous foreign countries. Despite initial struggles to establish a productive working relationship with President Reagan, Bush eventually won his loyalty, leading to their landslide re-election in 1984. Next, Bush's presidential campaign was multifaceted. With a background in domestic politics and foreign affairs, plus eight years as vice president, he was well prepared. His campaign, launched in October 1987, focused on continuing Reagan's legacy with stances against flag burning and abortion and support for free trade and community volunteerism. Despite early setbacks like losing the Iowa caucus and battling an image of being wimpy, Bush rebounded strongly, winning the New Hampshire primary and dominating the Super Tuesday races. The campaign against Democratic nominee Michael Dukakis was aggressive, with the controversial Willie Horton ad and the revolving door spot painting Dukakis as extremely liberal and soft on crime. These strategies were pivotal in shaping public perception and contributed significantly to Bush's victory. Then, as the 41st President of the United States Bush's tenure was marked by significant domestic and international events and controversies. He signed the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 and the Clean Air Act amendments, and his reliance on veto power and a challenging relationship with a Democrat-controlled Congress, particularly with Senate Majority Leader George Mitchell, were notable aspects of his presidency. Internationally, Bush's presidency also coincided with the end of the Cold War and the fall of the Berlin Wall. He supported Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev and led the US in the First Gulf War, although his decision to halt the invasion of Iraq and leave Saddam Hussein in power was contentious. Despite high approval ratings, particularly post-Gulf War, Bush's perceived inattention to domestic issues and breaking the No New Taxes pledge contributed to his defeat in the 1992 presidential election. That year began with his approval rating falling below majority for the first time, further declining amid the presidential primaries. 
However, little did Father H.W. know that the story of a two-term Bush presidency was well on its way. It just wouldn't be with Daddy at the helm. George W. Bush was born on the 6th of July, 1946, in New Haven, Connecticut, and his early years were overshadowed by the loss of his sister, Robin, to leukemia, a tragedy that deeply affected him and strengthened his bond with his mother. At Yale University, Bush pursued a history degree, graduating in 1968 amidst a backdrop of controversy. His acceptance into the Texas Air National Guard, especially with a minimal score on a pilot aptitude test and during the height of the Vietnam War, raised eyebrows, with many speculating that his father's political influence as a congressman played a role in this decision. And Bush's early adulthood was famously marked by excessive drinking, which he later acknowledged as problematic, though he never identified as an alcoholic. Reportedly, his drinking habits bordered on binge drinking, occasionally leading to offensive behavior. However, a pivotal change occurred in the 1970s, culminating in his decision to embrace sobriety following a particularly wild celebration of his 40th birthday in 1986. And in 1977, George W. Bush's life took a positive turn with his marriage to Laura Welch, a former teacher and librarian. Shortly thereafter, the couple welcomed twin daughters, Jenna and Barbara, in 1981. Notably, Laura Bush's influence extended to her husband's political career. As First Lady of Texas and then the United States, she championed education, health care and human rights, advocating for the well-intentioned, if controversial, No Child Left Behind Act and the Reading First program. She also founded the National Book Festival and worked with UNESCO on global literacy programs. Now, George W. Bush's political journey began in earnest in 1994, when he ran for governor of Texas against Ann Richards. Despite the intense campaign and high favorability ratings for both candidates, Bush won with 53% of the vote. As governor, he was known for his commitment to bipartisanship and compassionate conservatism, focusing on principles like limited government and personal responsibility. His tenure saw significant achievements, including increased education spending and reforms that linked teacher salaries and promotions to student performance on standardized tests. However, his governorship wasn't without controversy. Bush faced scrutiny for Texas's high use of capital punishment and for education reforms that heavily relied on testing and school report cards. His taught reform measures also sparked debate. Bush's effective governance in Texas led to his re-election in 1998, making him the first governor in Texas history to be elected to consecutive four-year terms. His success in Texas subsequently brought him national attention from the Republican Party, culminating in his nomination as their presidential candidate in 2000. Now, the decision for George W. Bush to run for the presidency in 2000 was deeply rooted in family history and his personal political journey. As the eldest son of former President George H.W. Bush, he had been actively involved in his father's political campaigns, including the 1992 re-election bid. However, the loss of his father in the 1992 election set the stage for George W. Bush to consider his own political aspirations, a decision that solidified during his second inauguration as Texas governor. The 2000 presidential campaign, pitting Texas Governor Bush against Vice President Al Gore, quickly became one of the most disputed in U.S. history. With Gore winning the popular vote, but the electoral outcome hinging on Florida's 25 votes, the nation watched as a slender Bush lead triggered a recount. The Supreme Court's 5-4 decision to halt the recount, citing time constraints to meet the electoral certification deadline, effectively handed the presidency to Bush. This outcome sparked significant controversy, casting doubts on Bush's legitimacy and tarnishing the Supreme Court's reputation. And then, George W. Bush's presidency was a period marked by major events and deep divisions. The 9-11 terrorist attacks, which resulted in nearly 3,000 American deaths, transformed Bush into a wartime president, with his initial response garnering overwhelming public approval. However, his administration's subsequent actions, particularly the invasion of Iraq, attracted intense scrutiny. The Iraq war, justified by the perceived threat from Saddam Hussein, initially had notable support, but later became a point of deep division. The war's human and financial costs, including the loss of over 200,000 Iraqi lives and the displacement of millions, led to widespread criticism. Even Bush himself later acknowledged his administration's errors in his 2010 memoir, Decision Points. 
And domestically, Bush's policies were equally contentious. His 2001 and 2003 tax cuts significantly reduced federal revenue, while his vision of an ownership society aimed to promote personal responsibility in various aspects of American life. Bush's speaking style, often perceived as folksy or downright pedantic, and the tight structure of his administration, with influential figures like Vice President Dick Cheney and Chief of Staff Andy Card, were distinctive features of his presidency. However, regardless of the sometimes infamous, sometimes glorious nature of George W. Bush's time as president, he without a doubt catapulted the family name to unseen heights. Yet, there were many, many more Bushes at work behind the scenes, bolstering the social power and political muscle of the family at the same time W was in office. With his father and elder brother both serving as US presidents, John Ellis Jeb Bush, born in 1953, had to carve out his own path. After graduating from the University of Texas, he ventured into banking and later real estate development in Florida, and his political ascent culminated in his election as Florida's governor in 1999. Notably, Jeb Bush was a proponent of immigration reform and even sought the Republican presidential nomination in 2016. And though his presidential bid was unsuccessful, Jeb's political endeavors have significantly contributed to the Bush family's legacy, while William Hall, Billy Bush, born in 1971, diverged from the family's political trajectory by choosing a career in entertainment. Known for his work on syndicated entertainment news shows, Billy has maintained an apolitical stance, focusing on his individual career in the entertainment industry. This career choice has diversified the Bush family's public image, extending their influence beyond the realm of politics. But both Jeb and Billy have faced their own sets of challenges and controversies. Billy Bush faced a personal scandal a bit later involving Donald Trump and the infamous locker room talk conversation, which drew significant media attention. And Jeb Bush's 2016 presidential campaign struggled to gain traction, leading to his withdrawal after the South Carolina Republican primary. Other members of the Bush family, active in various sectors, include Dorothy Bush Koch and Neil Bush. Dorothy, known as Doro, is an author and philanthropist, contributing to health and wellness initiatives and literacy programs, and Neil Bush is a businessman and chairs several foundations, including those focused on literacy and US-China relations. Furthermore, in the 2010s, the overall Bush family, particularly George H. W. Bush and George W. Bush, experienced notable shifts in public perception. George H. W. Bush, the 41st US president, increasingly came to be regarded as an elder statesman. His foreign policy, in retrospect, garnered appreciation as an exemplar of American leadership, especially when contrasted with the challenges faced by his son and successors. Despite not securing a second presidential term, George H. W. Bush's reputation saw a resurgence with recognition of his pragmatic and results-driven leadership approach. George W. Bush encountered a more intricate public image during this time. His presidency, marked by significant controversy, often drew criticism for his economic policies, communication skills, foreign policy, and perceived intelligence. However, post-presidency, his public favorability saw an upswing. By 2013, nearly half of Americans viewed him positively, perhaps reflecting his tenure as being less divisive than more recent administrations, marking a considerable improvement from the low approval ratings he experienced upon leaving office in 2009. In his life after the presidency, George W. Bush embraced painting of all things, finding it both relaxing and inspiring. He published Portraits of Courage, a book featuring his paintings that pay tribute to military veterans, showcasing a more personal and calming aspect of the former president. But then, the passing of George H. W. Bush on the 30th of November 2018 profoundly affected the Bush family and their public standing. George H. W. Bush's death also significantly impacted the family's public legacy. He was celebrated for his commitment to his country and his Thousand Points of Light initiative, inspiring generations of Americans and earning praise from global leaders, and his life and service have left a unique impact on the Bush family and on American public life. Thus, as the 2020s unfold, the Bush family's legacy continues to evolve. Though their political clout appears to be diminishing, their influence has stretched across American politics, media, sports, entertainment, and business for generations.
Therefore, indeed, the Bush family's impact on American society and politics remains significant, and their legacy is likely to be a subject of ongoing discussion and analysis in the future. And now, we'd like to hear your thoughts. What is your personal opinion on the Bush family's legacy? Is it admirable or embarrassing? We look forward to reading your comments. And thanks again for joining us for another episode. Cheers until next time.